Go for it. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon. <laughs> Let's stick to hello. Yeah. <laughs> Safer. Hi, Danny. It's been a while. Hello there. How are you? Hi. Outstanding. Living and loving it up in Costa Rica. Oh, nice. <laughs> we are surrounded by snow. Mountains of snow. Yeah, I could turn around and give you guys a better view. Ah, no, hi, Dan. Ah, it hurt my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like traveling a little bit, right? I mean, right? All right, I'm going to be comfortable. All right, let's give a few minutes to, um, um, to people who are not on time, like you. And then, uh, and then we'll start. Hey, Paul, nice to see you. Hey, Ron. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. First, uh, first week of the the semester. My last, uh, my last first week of school. Wait, you last first week of school? I see your I'm last saying week. it's my last first week of school because I'm graduating in May. Yeah. Your education will then be complete. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. No need to no need to learn anything more. Nothing left to learn. All right, I'm gonna share with you like the agenda. I mean, no need to, it's just for people to have an idea and, uh, and uh, of uh, what's uh, going on and what's, what we're gonna talk about uh, during this hour. But again, like any subject is welcome. Uh, no need to uh, be in the agenda to be heard. Um, and, and probably I will have to reshare because people can't see if I shared it before, right, like Matt. Anyway, uh, it's good to see you. It's a can't believe it's already February <laughs> type of uh, a type of month. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, I mean it's, it's still the beginning of the year. Uh, I think that what, the only thing that changes you can't really say Happy New Year anymore. I think that's a tradition. Um, but a lot definitely. A lot of positive uh, things happening in the community and uh, and you know like hopefully in the world uh, as well and um, and yeah like so let's uh, let's try to have a positive hour and uh, and um, talk about what's happening in um, our community and your community uh, and um, and and go from there uh, so. Um, one thing we did is, uh, is uh, we're going to start uh, with um, the community updates um, and uh, because there are a lot of uh, updates and things happening. So I think it's, uh, it's good to give you uh, uh, the floor. Um, and uh, before I forget, are there any like new people where it's their first time? Don't be shy. I'm not going to. But if you are, if it's your first uh, coming hello. to call, you know. Hi, yeah. hello, Hi, this is Andrea. I put oh. my screen on as well. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, Hi. it's the first time uh, joining uh, uh, this uh, monthly event. I, 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 I think. But uh, I've been um, a bit, for my fault, uh, not very, very effective. Now I'm also in Italy for now. But I've been trying to uh, 
say, build up a, a community in Washington, D.C. so far not successful, but hopefully <laughs> more successful. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, One time we'll be back. Uh, I think late March. Late be. March. Yeah, but, definitely. Uh, good and, to uh, see everybody. To yes, good, uh, nice to meet you. And uh, and uh, you can also see um, um, Angela, who is next to me on the bubbles, but yeah. maybe yeah. not <laughs> next to me on your screen, um, who is uh, the community uh, manager. So um, yeah, yeah. She, no, she actually promoted me to be the leader of Washington, but I'm uh, uh, <laughs> now in Italy, but Wait, I'm where looking forward to help then? out. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. Uh, nice to meet you, Andrea. Um, nice meeting everybody. Mars, is it also your first call? Mars? Yes, Mars. this is my first. This is my first call, and I am quite active in the digital realm. Probably you saw some of my comments, proposals, ideas in the Telegram channel. Mm -hmm. But obviously, it is better to be present and have some face-to-face -face, uh, connection and uh, just very briefly about me my biggest skill is uh, connectedness i connect multiple different uh, paradigms i am a member of the abundance community with peter diamandis i am part of exponential organizations exo with salim ismail I am strongly connected with effective altruism, deep adaptation, psychedelic society, and the various novel projects in the blockchain space. Mm, so yeah, now we live in the new world order, everything shifted. So even the most radical ideas are now um, like facing a very fertile ground. Everyone is willing to innovate. Everyone is willing to change. And the major international organizations, say uh, Davos, World Economic Forum, they are pushing the agenda of the Great Reset. So if entire world is shifting, I want to become one of these people who are helping shape the future on this planet and other planets. All right, thank you uh, for uh, for this introduction. It's a it's a broad project, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, hopefully we can talk a, a little bit about it. Um, anybody else who is uh, new to the calls? This is my first uh, monthly call as well. Nice to see everybody. I've crossed Seriously, a bunch Jeff? Of people here. I know, it's your first I know. call. My first call. <laughs> I have so many calls. I have so many calls. That's my issue. So um, yeah, really happy to be here for this one and uh, glad to see some faces and put some faces to names. Um, I get all the emails and uh, really excited about everything going on in the Radical Exchange community. Um, myself, I'm working on the, the common stack um, and block science and the token engineering commons. We're using um, kind of complex system modeling uh, to provide data-driven data decision-making um, for um, complex systems like community token ecosystems and so on. Um, so we're interested in using quadratic funding, quadratic voting, um, conviction voting, kind of pushing the envelope on um, new grassroots democratic tools for community empowerment. I'm so happy to be here and uh, happy to hear uh, what's new in the radical exchange community. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, I believe you work with Danny and Livia as well on, uh, on this. So good to see you as well. Um, Definitely. Anybody else? Amit, do you want to share? I don't think his video is working, but um, uh, Amit Kumar is uh, from a new member from New Delhi and hopefully going to help us grow community there. So uh, welcome. If he wants to talk, feel free. Yeah, hi Angela. Uh, we had a talk a uh, few weeks ago, and uh, I want to um, uh, implement these ideas and expand on them uh, in some like uh, across India, uh, starting from one of the states. Uh, it's called Kerala. Um, so I just uh, contacted few people, and uh, I have to make some presentation and. Uh, 
do something I don't know yet fully. So let's see how it goes and then we will talk about it later. Am I audible? Yeah, Thank you. Yes, we can hear you. Thanks. All right, uh, and uh, one news also on uh, on the chapters. I mean, I'm I'm also welcoming people who are part of the chapters. If you have like something, so for the newcomers, like the chapters are really the core of um, of radical exchange movement uh, to um, you know like iterate on uh, on some uh, ideas, but also like tackle local uh, issues. And um, and we uh, we do have quite. Uh, uh, a lot of, uh, of them. And if you have a question or want to start one, um, Angela next to me is, uh, is here uh, as well to, uh, to help. And uh, I don't know if, uh, if Nate is here from San Francisco. Um, no, so anyway, so he mentioned and Matt, maybe you can give us more details, but uh, the San Francisco chapter is uh, hosting a virtual uh, meetup on February 10th. Uh, I put the let me put the uh, URL in the in the chat if you're interested. Uh, and Matt, do you want to tell us a little bit more? Sure. Yeah, it'll just be um, a good way to bring together a number of the people from the Bay Area who haven't met up in person in a while. Um, uh, I will give a short talk and have a short conversation with uh, Amanda Joy Ravenhill from the Buckminster Fuller Institute. Um, and then we'll have kind of an open discussion and I think it should be, uh, should be a fun conversation and a nice way to uh, meet some Bay Area radical exchange folks, but uh, don't have to be from the Bay Area. Everyone is invited and um, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, I feel like there's so many people who uh, actually lived at one point in San Francisco and might still be interested in, uh, you know, connecting locally. So it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's great. So um, I, before I go ahead, like, is there anything else happening or not happening or you want to share about your, your chapter? Um, I see Giovanni is here from Italy uh, and, uh, uh, and a few other people. Hi, hi everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Here in Italy, actually, I'm just headed back to Milano and I'm trying to take back the community, even uh, adding people to, to the group. Uh, I just changed job this uh, last period. So it's like it's, it, it was pretty busy, but we are like looking ahead to to restart with uh, with communities and uh, meetups here. Awesome. So, sorry, for, sorry for the mask, but uh, I am uh, in the library, so I'm forced to to wear it. And of course, uh, of yeah. course, this is a good uh, reminder. So glad I yeah, it, it, it was actually a reminder for everybody. Yeah, so, thank you. <laughs> a, thank you, fun. Um. All right. Any anything else? Um, if not, like I'll uh, I'll go to uh, to um, um, to Diva, um, Divya. I'm sorry, um, but I don't want to cut anybody. No. So one thing we wanted to uh, pay attention to is uh, um, uh, Divya uh, published uh, a paper. Uh, which I will put in the chat uh, right now. Ooh, that's not the link, but I will. Um, and uh, it's a very deep uh, insights into like Taiwan uh, civic tech. And uh, and we have the chance she's here uh, to uh, talk to us a little bit more about it. So Divya, it's your. Hi, everyone. Yeah, um, as uh, Fanny said, just put out this paper on Taiwan's kind of general ecosystem of digital democracy. I know. A lot of folks here are really interested in the incredible innovations that are happening there, uh, spearheaded by Audrey Tong. And thanks to everyone in the community who sort of helped me figure out uh, all of this. And I know Paula 
Berman and Debbie are Radical Exchange Fellows now, and they're also hoping to expand on some of this work and do more grassroots work in Taiwan to figure out really what the origin of these kinds of practices is and how we can make them more scalable in other spaces. So with that, I think uh, the, the paper sort of speaks for itself. I'm happy to answer questions over email if anyone has any. Um, but I think the real thing to keep in mind is um, you know, a blueprint for this community in terms of building out an ecosystem of, of democratic principles that can work, you know, covering civic innovation, covering resource provision to underserved communities like broadband and healthcare, which Taiwan has some of the best in the world, um, covering, you know, accessibility of, of technology, the Audrey Tong's famous statement of using technology to make the state um, transparent to the people rather than the other way around. And I think there are so many projects Kind of happening here that take on different pieces of that. So really looking forward to continuing this conversation and, and seeing how we can bring some of these innovations into these spaces. Thank you, Divya. And uh, thank you, Jen, for putting the link uh, to uh, to the paper. Um, Divya, if, if, if you don't mind putting your email in, in the chat uh, so yep. people know how to reach out to you. And uh, and I know, Le, uh, Amit Le, uh, you had some um, questions and, and iteration you wanted to do uh, in India and other countries on Taiwan use case. Um, and so I don't know if you have like, a question now or... Uh... Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask uh, if like uh, radical exchange would like to have a sort of basic platform uh, is it echoing? I, I can hear you well. No, I'm fine. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, like uh, in Taiwan, there's a, a, a capability uh, to build such things which, uh, which let them um, uh, forge a sort of revolution, digital revolution, but in other countries which also need such uh, solutions, they don't have a basic uh, capability. So I guess uh, if a radical exchange would like to build some basic platform of uh, how uh, people in different countries can use uh, these sorts of tools like police and like uh, how to connect uh, uh, their um, internet, uh, how to get the internet when the government is uh, like, uh, constantly uh, restricting their access to internet. Um, that would be a, a big help to uh, those communities. And uh, then uh, they could use it to, uh, to like uh, build their own uh, sort of, uh, uh, not revolution, but I, I guess uh, what I should say is like- um, uh, I mean, could, I, could I actually suggest things. Sorry to interrupt, I, but could I actually suggest that you talk bilaterally with Divya because she has a lot of expertise on the India situation. And I think that you yeah. two could really benefit from collaborating. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, please email me, sounds good. Yeah, and it's yeah. definitely in line with uh, a lot of, uh, you know, like, I mean, the use case of, of Taiwan is, uh, um, is definitely something that still needs a lot of, uh, uh, of discussion and, and spreading uh, around. Yeah. So, um, so definitely, I think that's a, um, a good suggestion uh, by Glenn. Um, like people uh, in Iran and go ahead. and in other countries also can use such platforms to sort of circumvent their communications um, to build their own communities and um, get rid of like uh, the restrictions imposed on them by the governments. Um, I'm also quickly going to put a, a link to the Polish community uh, chat in the Zoom chat. So um, yeah. if you're interested in sort of spinning up Polish instances in specific communities, this is a, a great group of people to ask for, you know, information on that, both on the dev side and on the kind of ecosystem best practices side. In Polish, we have a, a community call every Saturday at 3 p.m. EST, if you're interested in joining us. Okay. Thank you, um, uh, Divya and, uh, and Amy. And uh, uh, one thing that um, came up and uh, was a subject of self-sovereign identity. So it's a, it's a huge subject 
um, and submitted by Anonymous. Uh, but I thought that was a, a good segue into maybe revisiting the uh, data agency talk from last week uh, that uh, Matt you had with uh, Nick Vincent Kalia, the identity woman uh, moderated by Jen. Um, and uh, let me put the link here, but um, maybe if you have some feedback or some, um, you know, like insights that came up from that discussion to share uh, with the community, that might be um, useful. Sure, yeah. I, I don't know who, if anyone who submitted that question would like to, um, to raise it and hash it out, that'd be that'd be great but we had a uh, we had a wonderful conversation um, um, about the um, essentially this big question of you know how to how to structure the the agency that we try, are trying to exert over our over our data um, and talking about the different ways of uh, of thinking about that in you know in the sense of uh, you know should we be thinking should we be thinking and talking more in terms of uh, individual control over data and sort of data ownership or do we need to um you know as i think sort of shift the vocabulary a little bit more towards uh the idea of data governance and like shared or community um authority over uh over decisions about data um so um yeah there's there's a lot um a lot there um i don't know if anyone who who saw that talk had any thoughts or, or would like to to dive into a particular area of it be happy to well if you haven't watched it i put the link in the in the in the chat uh maybe jen as you moderated the the panel did you have any uh, anything to add to matt's uh, comment well i know after after that call um, I actually spoke with Joe Lemke, who's on the call right now, and he also sent a question about it. And it was to think, you know, we're thinking about it from what, there are several things. One, it's, we're thinking about it from like a community or individual perspective, but also how do we kind of topple the dethrone the giants and while we also have to think about the sharing of data and it being like of some commons or some more commonly generated and benefiting the many the idea of power um and joe you could probably rephrase this much better than me but sharing power like generating that kind of idea rather than seizing power rather than somebody always wanting to get to the top until they're knocked out by the next person that wants to get to the top and how this is also a very important part of that puzzle i think um then the other thing was i might be i'm forgetting it right now i'll let that sit for a moment while i remember joe sure. you have yeah, Joe, jump in anytime, Joe. But what, one other kind of uh, theme to theme that came out of that conversation, which um, which I've been thinking about a lot recently, is is the theme of, you know, when we talk about um, we talk a lot about individual control over data, and this sometimes runs up against these ideas of of more like shared or community control over data. And I think that one of the ways, one of the best ways of sort of resolving the, the confusions that arise in these conversations is to shift from uh, the idea of control to the idea of responsibility. So in other words, you know, the, the idea that we sort of, that we all need to individually exert perfect control over our data, you know, runs into contradictions and, and, and incoherences when we consider the fact that our decisions about data affect others. But it actually makes perfect sense to, to talk about our individual responsibility um, uh, pertaining to our data. So in the sense that, you know, the decisions that we make about disclosing or not disclosing data, you know, sh sharing, sharing information to help others in, you know, for example, like in contract tracing data to control the pandemic 
or in the sense, or you know, the sort of negative externalities of data of data disclosure when we disclose information that has a detrimental effect on other people in our community, right? These are all examples of like individual responsibility in connection with data, and uh, and it's these kinds of shared institutions, uh, you know, sort of shared control over data, you know, like data cooperatives and coalitions and so on, that uh, that might give us the uh, the possibility of fulfilling our individual responsibilities in connection with the, the data that we control, you know, by essentially by sharing our, our you know, um, by making democratic or, or shared decisions about, about what we're doing. So anyway, Joe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that was good. I think uh, um, Jennifer introduced it well. The, the notion of sharing power comes from working with communities and seeing how to work in a community, you need to find what people are good at and put them in positions where they can excel. And I guess there's, you know, this, one of the things in the chat is the self-sovereign identity, which is kind of this exclusive I am singular versus a more pluralistic way that I have multiple relationships some are very close groups, uh, family groups, others become very large groups, global groups, such as this one, but there's many, many groups in between. And so navigating all of these different um, scaled groupings is what, how we're trying to share power. And I think, you know, Audrey's work in Taiwan is uh, a very good example of those different, of kind of those middle range groupings uh, definitely much more complex than family groupings, but yet simultaneously a little bit, um, they're not delving into international politics per se. They're keeping things more at the local level of air quality or schools or masking or whatever. And so they're, they, Audrey's work seems to exist in that middle zone where uh, there's a lot of work to be done and a lot of power to be shared. Does it, uh, Divya, maybe you came across, and I know Glenn, I think you've brought it up. Um, Taiwan has an approach called warm power and it's in kind of contradiction to China's sharp power approach of strong control. And uh, the warm power approach is about sharing power and taking, you know, because they have no power is what they say. They can only come at it with a, very gentle, like welcoming, and let's work on this together um, method. And it encompasses many dimensions like gender equality and transparency and digital responsibility. Um, but I think there's, there's something where the government is trying to be responsive and trustworthy. And that's a major difference compared to when you have a surveillance state or something of the opposite effect. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, as was mentioned, I think Matt brought it up, that changed the way they dealt with even like quote unquote surveillance in the pandemic sense, in the in the health sense, because people were much more willing to actively contribute the kind of data that, you know, folks in the US didn't want any to install contract tracing applications or do the kinds of like um, once you come back from travel, you have to stay in a certain space and your phone sends GPS notifications or whatever, like all of those kinds of things felt so invasive to folks in the US because there's so little trust and legitimacy and, you know, there's no understanding of where that data would go, who would have access to it. So it makes absolute sense that people didn't want to participate in those systems. Whereas in Taiwan, I think it changed the way people interacted with their own data and with the questions of privacy and security, even in the same kind of health context because a lot of it was much more opt-in um, and, and collectively based. I, I also think in that shared data for the uh, testing and tracing, Taiwan has a national healthcare system. So they already had all of the citizens data. So the data was already there. It was just reconfiguring it for this other use, um, which of course in America, we don't have that situation. So yeah, the complexities um, also contributed to the difference.
definitely a large, uh, a large subject. So um, I don't know if anybody uh, wants to add anything. I think there is an issue of trust because I uh, traditionally do not trust my government. However, if there was a clear, transparent, verifiable process, I am okay for my phone to act as a safety device. Uh, like, okay, I am, I am a guy, so I'm not afraid, but if I was a, a female in say Rio de Janeiro or some a place with the very high murder rate, if I was like uh, someone who is physically weak or elderly, I am okay for my phone to monitor my live signals. And if I scream for help, I am okay for zero interaction uh, alerting the police. And I know that it was at the Apple, Apple conference, they, uh, the Apple Watch is monitoring falls and automatically calls for help. So yeah, it is the issue of trust. And if I was to trust my, um, that my data is not misused, uh, then uh, I would be very happy to you know, receive extra support and help. Yeah, I think that's exactly that's exactly what we need to do is build these groups at these middle zones that can develop that kind of trust so that the data can be shared, the power can be shared through these different groupings. Because if I'm just a self-sovereign identity, there's way too many things to navigate. But if I can trust some groups then it makes uh, navigating the endless amount of data a lot easier. I guess the US has a total, totally different conceptions of uh, whom to trust and uh, who is trustable. Like uh, people don't trust their governments, but they uh, still allow the individual companies to grow as uh, large as they can. And instead if the, like uh, uh, when the Facebook or some other entities uh, has grown that much, like uh, if the government or like the society starts taking uh, uh, control over it uh, and uh, uh, like uh, making it a democratic uh, system, then um, the trust would be automatically established because in that case, if some people are uh, on in control of Facebook, they would automatically have to make it open source and uh, um, like a, a transparent entity and other people can edit it and, uh, and uh, edit the code and make it uh, however they like. Uh, so if the, someone is abusing using Facebook, uh, they can set their own protocols like uh, some sort of Mastodon system on, on Mastodon, I guess they have uh, different sorts of community building. And then um, they won't have to uh, fear about the, uh, like uh, one person is controlling it or their government is controlling it because uh, the government won't be in, uh, the government is not a separate entity. It shouldn't be seen as a, separate entity controlled by one person or president or some senators or something. Uh, if the, uh, if the, if the um, government system is itself uh, transparent by design itself, because the people are making it, it's not like, um, it's only we give up control to some people and call them government and uh, sit lazy and sit, like uh, uh, then they have a separate sort of control over us. If we are constantly making the platform ourselves, then no one is uh, in control. Uh, like uh, no one separate entity is in control. The people who have, who would be taking some important decisions would be people uh, elected by us. Like uh, Audrey Tang, she, uh, they are elected by the people uh, themselves. It's not like uh, audit tank can um, impose something that uh, they want and the people didn't uh, um, ask for. In India, it's a separate, totally different thing. Like, uh, 
we elect people and then uh, we sit around and in other democracies is also the same so uh, we have to constantly like build government and treaties at um, uh, our own platform instead of like um, behold uh, instead of being beholden to some people who we elected once uh, every four or five years and that's definitely uh, uh something that um you know like going back to what uh, joe said about um this like middle ground like trusted authorities like there's a lot of work being done on data unions i don't know if uh, matt or ben paul um you guys uh, are working on um Yeah, I mean, happy to happy to talk more about about data unions work, but I feel okay. Know, so, sure. so we'll uh, we'll tap that discussion. So, already done. <laughs> so data union, another time. Um, one thing so on data that I uh, wanted to share. I don't think she's here, but Kalia, um, so who was on the panel last week, uh, shared this um, biometric workshop. Um, and uh, it's interesting because it's uh, it's a lot of different uh, folk from. Um, working on biometrics, but from very different uh, backgrounds. And it's co-created by attendees. So it's like, it's a, if that's something you're interested in or like a specific subject, you can actually uh, impact the agenda, which really like the way she, um, you know, form her workshops. And uh, Matt, you've been to many, right, of, uh, of her um, identity workshops. Yeah, I mean, sh she's been, she's been sort of running the the hub of the uh, uh, sort of Silicon Valley network that thinks about these questions for, for a very, very long time. Um, and it's a great place to, um, you know, to learn from people who have been engaged with the question for, for decades. Yeah, next time she can talk about it. She joins this call uh, sometimes. And um, um, so I want to take the advantage of having a few people from the common stacks here. Um, I know Danny and Jeff, you've been developing this um, simulator tool um, and uh, would love to hear more uh, about what you guys are doing at common stack and give us. Awesome. <laughs> well, I want to just give you, uh, um, for those who don't know, um, I attended the Radical Exchange conference in Detroit, was really excited to see all of the things that were going on there. And then our, uh, Giveth has uh, a community in Barcelona, and uh, I had initially held a Radical Exchange event in Barcelona. And that is the basis of the narrative for this common stack simulator, um, the inspiration that the unique intersection of everything from politics and activism and arts and academics that Radical Exchange presents is a unique opportunity to get this information out to as many people as possible to make the changes we need in the world. Um, so just to give you that little background, um, when Common Stack was launching the initiative for this simulator through Giveth, I happened to be the person who got to choose who uh, we would use as the main character in this story for this simulator, which is basically a kind of an online comic book to teach how to design a regenerative commons um, and somehow help people understand the complex dynamics that are behind um, forecasting and modeling. And I can let Jeff speak more to that after we walk through it because the point of this game is to gather the, as much data as we can in order to improve our ability to determine whether the parameters that we're choosing for our commons will work or not. So I'm gonna just go into a, a little brief um, explanation that right now we, are, we have it complete and working. So it's considered feature complete and it's gonna be going out to a limited audience, to the common stack, to CAD CAD and block science folks, and our token engineering audience in particular. The goal is to get the common simulator launched and live. Um, it serves several purposes. 
Uh, the first one is to demonstrate how CAD-CAD can be used to parameterize a commons hatch in what we hope is entertaining and a gamified medium. Um, it is an experiment in the CAD-CAD front end UI to simplify and contextualize these simulation results. And the third point is to introduce the audience to the awesome radical exchange movement and the importance of the commons. Um, so I can tell you more about it if you'd like. I can share um, a draft uh, in, the, in the comments of a document that Jeff has put together to help you understand the purpose of this. Um, but what I'd really like to do with this time is show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know um, so if we have if time to, uh, to go through the entire thing, but if you can show the beginning, that would be great. One question that, I mean, yes, if you can share it with, uh, with people like on this call, you might get uh, some more feedback. Um, and, um, and you said, so radical exchange is used in the narrative, right? So it's like, I mean, I've done it, so it's like a little biased, but um, it's, okay. um, uh, so the start of the simulator uh, is, pretty much you like setting up like a radical exchange um, meetup. Uh, and then you make these decisions like that impact the future. And, uh, um, and as Danny said, like you're pretty much testing the commons um, um, of common stack. I'm wondering if there's, uh, have you used a radical exchange concepts in a, in a way in, in there was just a narrative. So what I will say is the original narrative that was drafted to tell this story has been reduced and reduced and reduced and reduced um, to meet the primary goals of finding a way to explain the concepts behind CAD CAD in a successful way. That said, that's why I feel this is a really important time to share it with all of you. Um, because honestly, at this stage, I would love to have some feedback from the radical exchange community on how we might make some adjustments to the narrative that is in there to do that exactly that a little bit better. Um, I have done my best with the, the words that are on the screen um, to convey simply uh, the concept of radical exchange as a network of communities. But honestly, much of what you're asking about has been cut from it. And rather than me try to guess what should be in there, I would love to be able to get feedback from you all in taking a look at this and really paying attention to some of the words that are in there and identifying how we might communicate the core concepts of radical exchange in some way within this, the confines of this narrative. Um, and this can be really quick. I really think that um, if you would allow me to share my screen, which I see I now have the button, uh, I can give you guys a look at this and we'll, it'll be much clearer after that. All right, I'll give you three minutes. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, if you have something to add or when, uh, while Danny is sharing, I think sure. that's... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm happy to, to give a bit of context while Danny is loading that up. Um, so the, the idea behind the common stack is that we can have multiple different algorithmic governance policies, quadratic voting or quadratic funding may be one of those. Um, the, the idea behind this simulator and behind CAD-CAD, which is a uh, basically a complex system simulation tool is that um, algorithmic governance policies don't just stack cleanly. You know, if you put quadratic voting on top of a governance token on top of a reputation token, we get these complex dynamic effects that we can't really intuit about. So we need to run them through a simulation and understand the impacts of having multiple tokens in an ecosystem um, or using those tokens for different algorithmic policies like quadratic voting um, or anything else. So the, the idea behind the common stack toolkit is that we have these composable governance mechanisms. Um, and then we have to simulate and understand how they interact with each other in a complex system involving humans, money, governance, et cetera. That sounds very much like Nathan Schneider and- uh, um, Right, and modular uh, politics, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so we're trying to approach that from sort of a data-driven um, approach using CAD-CAD as a tool. So this is where the simulator comes in. Um, this is probably the first time that a front-end interface, this is really where the, the common stack is bringing storytelling and art into the picture so that we can understand the outputs of these simulations in more than just um, scientific data plots. You know, we're trying to bring it into context of a community that's building towards a brighter future. So. I'll let Danny take it away from here. 
All right, are you able to see my screen? Great. Yes, you're good so I'm going to go. click watch intro here. Uh, this is setting the stage. Extraction, pollution, poor decision making have rendered water and air toxic to life. This is uh, the future. So the concept of the stories is that we're leaping into points in the past in order to make change um, that helps us save the planet. And so the main character of this story goes back in time with a new tool, CAD CAD, which is a future predicting tool. Um, and they can use this tool in uh, helping the radical exchange community to design a resilient economy, a, a commons, um, where the good decision making can lead to a brighter future. So this is just- So we're looking for what social- well, there we go. So we're looking for a social impact movement that has the greatest chance of changing the outcome of the future. And this is where we go into a bit of the storytelling. And this is the part that we would love to hear some feedback on. So this goes through landing in the past, discovering uh, landing in a body, discovering sunshine for the first time. Who am I? Uh, you look and discover that your name is Nick. Nick is actually the um, the organizer for Radical Exchange Barcelona. And the character of this game is discovering that they're on their way to host a Radical Exchange meeting at the Akasha Hub in Barcelona. So the mission of the player is to initiate the design of a self-sustaining Radical Exchange Commons at a strategic open source distribution point for rippling the needed economic value out into the world. We describe what is a commons, a well-engineered community-focused economy that rewards value creation. Where business models fail to do so, they can be formed whenever a community is creating value for society as a whole. And these commons emerge out of the community, their shared resources, and the protocols that they use to make decisions and to reward that continued value creation. The task of the player is to guide uh, the hatchers who are creating this commons through designing these protocols to successfully govern the commons. So in designing the commons uh, in this game, CAD CAD is sort of this invisible thing from the future that we're gonna be educating the community on what that commons is, how the mechanisms work, and then guiding through choosing the parameters to see if it will be a success. Um, the, this is an interesting thing. On this screen, we initially envisioned having pictures of uh, folks like those of you who are on this call on this uh, screen. And that is something I would still love to be able to do. Trusted experts who are accepting accountability for upholding the values and intentions are the hatchers. So I think now, okay. like, don't go, don't go any further because I think, uh, okay. I think you're gonna, you know, I think people have to uh, have to try and uh, and 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 now you, that you teased all of us, like, can't not share the link uh, to <laughs> to the simulator. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, definitely uh, uh, very interesting themes and and a lot more to uh, to talk about uh, on uh, on this project. So thanks uh, thanks a lot, Jeff and. Uh, and Danny to uh, uh, have uh, showed, uh, showed that. And I'm still waiting for the link. So don't forget. Yeah, I want to make sure I send you the right link. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and uh, yeah, try it. Uh, try it. Try, like, you know, we'll encourage everybody to, uh, to try it. And, uh, and so for the sake of, uh, of time, uh, we're reaching the 10, uh, 10 minutes. Um, I know we've, um, um, like there were uh, a few things that uh, we wanted to uh, let you know uh, as well if you missed it uh, that uh, one thing was the release ah thank you danny um for the link um yeah one thing i wanted to mention was the um, uh, release of a new uh, podcast uh, series called radical exchange Ex exchanges but the s in parenthesis um, and one episode is uh, already live. I don't know, Matt or Jen or Leon, if you want to uh, talk about it, um, either of the series or uh, the episode. 
Sure. This is just a new podcast where we'll do uh, regular uh, new conversations with people from from this community or, or you know, uh, experts from from wherever who are thinking about the same kinds of questions. Um, it's kind of, so it's sort of in parallel to the po podcast we already have, which is Radical Exchange Replayed, where we sort of replay as in podcast form, like talks and and sessions and other things that we've done. This will be sort of a more more of a uh, normal uh, conversation focused podcast. Um, and the, the first episode is out. It's, uh, it's with me and uh, Fred Turner, the uh, communications um, professor and uh, author of really, really great books about the, the history of technology. Um, so yeah, check it out. Uh, subscribe to the podcast and enjoy. And there, we've got a, a pipeline of uh, several more um, conversations that will be uh, trickling out over the next um, weeks and months. And I believe there's, uh, there's also like a replayed uh, podcast rightly on uh, with with Fred Turner from the last conference and uh, um, both of them are brilliant. I mean, if you uh, listening to uh, Fred is a, it's quite a, a charm. Um, Anything else, Leon or, or Jen? No, on uh, on podcasts. All right, um, and something we um, um, like something we're also gonna do is uh, is for the community of Radical Exchange. It's a new page coming up on the website <clears throat> where we'll uh, be able to publish. Um, projects or job opportunities that uh, you know you have um, and um, that could um, you know like then we could uh, publish it and uh, and help find um, right candidates uh, I know like sometimes the jobs around mechanism designs and all these things are like a little hard to um, fill uh, out on a, on regular websites so so we wanted to try to help uh, and and publish uh, that into the community. Uh, section. Um, Jen, I know it's your project, so I mean, I don't know if you have more details or if, uh, like, we'll, we'll send an email like that, um, um, ask, you know, like the, where you can submit um, this. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's send something out. <laughs> um, great. Uh, anything I forgot? Jen, Matt, Angela, Glenn? Not for me. Yeah, nothing for me either. Burning. Is, is there? It Maybe I'll we should see. Okay. Oh. Oh. Um, uh, just thank you, everyone, for making it to today's meeting and to you know tell all of your. I know a lot of you are leads uh, for your chapters to invite them into this and uh, you know stay active on Telegram and all of our socials. So uh, thank you for coming today. Yeah, I mean, uh, if there's um, like there's a bit of a bit more time uh, for um, you know like anybody who wants to add something or talk about um, a subject they they would like to uh, talk. Uh, you know, yes, I course. mentioned yeah? that briefly during the introduction about this entire transition happening in the world, and I will make a one very specific example. I am a, a Polish guy living in the UK. I went to a conference in Estonia, spoke with a guy in the Germany who is hiring developers in Ukraine. We communicate via email, which is Gmail, pay invoices via PayPal and talk on Skype. So we have eight different jurisdictions. And then when you look at the United Kingdom, we have the uh, Jersey, Guernsey, Isle of Man and Gibraltar. And each of these little islands have a different legal system, different financial system. They are British crown dependencies. Uh, they even have an emoji. You can type Jersey, Guernsey, Gibraltar, Isle of Man. They have own emoji. Uh, and then there is another situation at the Burning Man, because Burning Man is, say, a non-profit organization in San Francisco that runs festival in Nevada on a federal land. So which law is applicable? Um, that's why I put into the agenda the new network state that uh, I believe that community of the Ethereum 
has potential to create own rules, own legal system, own courts, own ways to resolve the disputes. Because at the end of the day, even if I hire a freelancer in India, I'm talking now about the digital economy. I go to the website, say freelancer.com or you know upwork.com, and now I pay them a couple of hundred dollars to do some digital work. And I much prefer if there was a fair, transparent, universal law. So this is just me surfing the wave of the current changes that are happening right now, entire world that moved to the digital economy. So this concept of the new states, new law, new country, it is happening. And I'm just encouraging you to continue this discussion. Um, one thought I thought I'd throw out there is, you know, Divya and Paula and so forth are doing a really great job on this Taiwan story. I think there's other stories we need to tell. I think Estonia is a really powerful one like that. And we've been making some good contacts there, including Divya. So I hope, um, I hope some others will uh, uh, think about that story as well. I, and I also think Finland and New Zealand, maybe to a somewhat lesser extent, are important stories to tell as well. I am the air resident in Estonia since 2015. Estonia is the first country to introduce uh, air residency. And New Zealand is also very innovative because they optimize for gross happiness index. You can optimize for one metric, which is GDP, economic output, or you can optimize for education, health, well-being, happiness. So both Estonia and New Zealand and other countries are leading the, you know, leading the innovation. Thanks a lot. Thanks uh, to bring up this. Uh, and uh, as Glenn said, like this, definitely a lot more um, effort to do to tell the stories of uh, of these countries who lead the way. So um, noted, uh, duly noted. And uh, anybody else um, wanted to uh, bring up something? I can give you the three minutes free if you if you don't have anything left. <laughs> Just um, uh, for a minute, um, if you have time. Um, I was trying to um, uh, think about something like um, uh, how uh, religion can be uh, think, uh, thought in radical exchange terms. Um, um, so uh, I was thinking like uh, if. Uh, because it's a big issue in India, even though I'm atheist, but I have to think about several sorts of things that keep happening in this country. So, so Amit, so, that's uh, a great I question. Was... One thing I would point you to is um, Matt Pruitt and Ryan Karana are starting to think about some of those issues, and I, I hope you'll communicate with them. They've been thinking more about Catholicism than about Eastern religions, but I think that's a big omission on our part. Uh, in particular, no, it's not about religion at all. Right? Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, uh, how uh, people who try to impose their uh, irrational beliefs on others um, should uh, be uh, thought of in terms of pros and cons, and how they can, um, how much they can impose their beliefs on others, and uh, there should be a cost on it and uh, um, they can self-assess on how much they want to assert their opinions on others if they are not actually rational or work. I, I definitely think you should talk to Matt. <laughs> and there's many different yeah, parts of what you're talking about that intersect with Matt's thoughts. So. It would be happy to follow up. I mean, um, uh, you can uh, reach out to me at, at matt at radicalexchange.org. Yeah, thanks. I will. Sorry, I'm trying to multitask and write that in the chat, but I'm bad multitasker. So uh, great, well, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. I uh, really appreciate you uh, bringing up subjects even before uh, the call. Uh, I think this really helped uh, highlight the wonderful projects and, 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 and questions and, and everything else that you guys are doing. So um, really um, thankful for uh, for that and uh, and on this positive note, 
let's uh let's go back and danny stop sharing your background like it looks like a fake background <laughs> all right well everybody um see you on Bye. other channels or next month bye bye take care bye bye everybody bye bye